The area of my original rectangle, when I multiply the base times the height, is 6 square centimeters. The area of my new figure, when I multiply the base times the height, is 24 square centimeters. I can see that the figures are similar because in each case I'm multiplying by a scale factor of 2 in order to get the new dimension. 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. But in terms of the area, if I were to go 6 times 2, I would get 12, not 24. The linear scale factor is 2. What we call the area scale factor is 4. We can see this better when I put it on grid paper. My original rectangle had a base of 3 units. We've now doubled that, a scale factor of 2, to get a base of 6 units. We also doubled the height, so instead of 2 centimeters, it now has a height of 4 centimeters. Because I'm extending this line as well as this line, I'm extending it twice, I'm applying the linear scale factor twice, you can see this is the original area here. Our new area is now 4 times times as large. Let's take a look at another example. We can see that we have two squares because the side lengths are the same. If I take the side length and square it, on my original square I have an area of four square centimeters. On my new square, similar figure, I have an area of 64 square centimeters. I can see that two times four gives me my new dimension of eight. My linear scale factor is four. But what are we multiplying the area by, the original area by, to get the new area? Well, if you guess 16, you're right. I've placed my original figure here, just so we can make a comparison, and we can see that I've taken the base of the original and I've extended it by four times the original amount. I've also taken the height of the original figure and I've extended that by four times the original amount. So because I'm extending both the base as well as the height, we're applying that linear scale factor two times. Think area is measured in square units. It's how many units we have going this way as well as this way. So because we're dealing with square units, we're going to square the scale factor in order to get our area scale factor. Our new area is 16 times larger than our original area. And finally, I calculated the area of the original triangle by taking the base times the height and dividing by 2. I now want to find the area of my new triangle. I know that I have a linear scale factor of 3 because my new base is 3 times as large as my original base. I now want to determine the area of my new figure, which is going to be similar to the original figure because I'm applying that scale factor to both the base and to the height. When I take a look at this, I could multiply base times height divided by 2, but the numbers are a little bit large to do mentally. So knowing that our linear scale factor is 3, that indicates that we're going to have an area scale factor of 9. We're squaring the scale factor, think square units on area, square the scale factor. We're applying it to both the base as well as the height. So now what we can do is say, okay, we know that the new figure is going to be 9 times as large as the original, so now I can just quickly multiply 24 times 9, and when I do that, I've got my new area. When we refer to scale factor, we typically refer to the linear scale factor. But if we were to square the linear scale factor, we have what's called the area scale factor. How many times larger is the area of our new figure going to be in relation to the area of our original figure? We can calculate that, similar to how we calculated linear scale factor, by dividing our new area by the original area. Now once we know the area scale factor, we can also get the linear scale factor. How do you get rid of a squared? Well, we know that we square root it. So once I know this, I can also get the linear by square rooting that value. Let's take a look now at a three-dimensional object. So we're going to start with a rectangular prism, and I'm going to calculate the surface area, so the area of each surface added together. We know there's six surfaces on a rectangular prism. The front face here is going to be identical to the back face, so I'm going to calculate two of those areas base times height, a height of 3. We know there's two of the ends, and again, they're going to be identical. So calculate the area of 1, and then I just doubled it. And then the same thing, the top and the bottom are going to be the same area. So find the area of that, and then double it. And then add all of those areas together to get the total area. I'm going to do the same thing with my new figure. And this is a similar figure, because I can see that I'm taking each original dimension, and I'm multiplying by a linear scale factor of 2. Each of the new dimensions is double the length of the original corresponding dimension. Again, I can go through and calculate the surface area, but it's a lot of work to find the area of each face and then add them all together. So a much faster way to go about getting this area is to say, okay, area. 
I know I'm dealing with square units. I'm going to square my linear scale factor and I'm going to get my area scale factor. I know that the new surface area is going to be four times as large as the original surface area. So all you have to do is calculate one surface area, multiply by four, and we'll get the new surface area without having to go through the formulas. We know that volume is the capacity or the amount of cubic units that we can fit inside of an object. The easiest way to calculate volume for a prism is just to figure out how many units can we fit along the base, so basically find the area of the base and then multiply by how many units we have on the height. So we can get 10 square centimeters on the base, three layers of that gives us 30 cubic centimeters. We know that if we take a look at our new figure, each of those linear dimensions has been extended by a factor of two. So we're doubling all of those dimensions to get our new dimensions. And so there's two ways we can go about getting the new volume. We can either, again, use the formula to calculate, or we can say that now we are extending the length and the width and the height. We're applying that scale factor one, two, three times. We are tripling our linear scale factor. So again, think cubic units. We're now going to cube our linear scale factor to get our volume scale factor, which in this case is eight. So if I don't wanna recalculate that, I can just find the original volume, recognize that the new volume is gonna be eight times as large, and then we can get the value that way. This is my rectangular prism on isometric dot paper, just so you can see what's happening. So this is the same thing. We know we have a linear scale factor of two. So all of my original dimensions have been doubled to get my new figure. In terms of the surface area, so this is the one where we're looking at the area. If we take a look at this face, and I've put the same object here so we can kind of see a comparison, we can see that we're now gonna fit one and then two, three and then four faces into that new shape. And the same thing if we take this side. So we're gonna have one face there. So one face there, so maybe let's just go over here. So this is gonna be that one face and then two and then three and then four. And that's happening for every face. So in terms of the surface area, our new figure, if the linear scale factor is two, we're gonna get four times as many faces onto the new shape. In terms of volume, so that's the cubed units, we can see that this volume is the space that this occupies. And then, I don't know, it's kind of hard to see, but you're going to fit eight of those figures into the new figure when we double those dimensions. So here's the first one. Our second one is gonna go kind of here. Our third one is gonna go back there. Fourth one is gonna go back there. So we're gonna fit four of those on the bottom, and then we're gonna stack another four on top, getting eight figures in there. And again, the units are going to give you a clue. So think cubic units for volume means k cubed is our volume scale factor and we can get that value by taking the new volume dividing by the original volume the units are the same so they're going to cancel out and that's going to give us the value of our volume scale factor so in our first example we're given a scale of 2 to 25 units i would write that as a fraction we know that the first number is the diagram measure the second number is the actual measure so then we're told the area of the scale diagram diagram is 20 centimeters squared. The units give you a clue here. So I'm going to put same unit, same line. So this is the diagram measure. I'm looking for the actual measure because that will indicate how much fabric I need to make the kite. Again, the units are going to be the same in this case. Now, here's what we have to remember. Because we're now dealing with area, we're going to be applying that scale factor to both the base as well as the height of our shape. So we're going to take our scale or scale factor and we're going to square it. So so remember these brackets indicate that the exponent gets applied to both the numerator as well as the denominator. So we're gonna go two squared over 25 squared. And I always tell people to just ignore the units when you're doing this. Otherwise people accidentally start squaring this number, which we're not going to do. So I would just ignore that for the time being. And we're going to cross multiply. So we're gonna go 25 squared times 20. We're gonna divide by two squared or four. So you're going to use the units to help you get set up. And then at the end, make sure you put the appropriate units on here. Now, if you wanna turn this into meters, because it's square units, remember we're also gonna square that conversion factor. So we're gonna now divide by 100 squared. So if you wanted to put it into meters, that's the value that you would get. So every time we're dealing with square units, think we're gonna square that factor that we're converting by. In our next example, we're given the dimensions of a laptop. So we have 12 inches by nine inches. We're also told that the laptop is gonna project onto a screen and we're given the area of the image it's going to project. 
We're told that they're similar, so that means the scale factor is going to be the same applied to both the base as well as the height. And we're asked to determine two things. We want to figure out what's the linear scale factor used to project the image from the laptop to the screen. We also want to know what are the dimensions of the screen. We're trying to determine the linear scale factor, but we're given the area of our new figure. So I'm going to use that area and then I can also determine what's the area of my original laptop monitor by multiplying the base by the height. Both of these units are the same, which they have to be for scale factor because they're going to cancel out. And then when I divide those areas, I'm going to get the area scale factor. Square rooting that number will give me the linear scale factor, which is 5.125. And remember, no units on scale factor. Once we know that linear scale factor, multiply the height to get the new height of the screen, multiply the base to get the new base of the screen, and then you can check if you multiply those together to get the area of the screen, is it the area? Area that we should be getting. And in our final example, we're given two tanks that are spheres and the capacity or the volume of each. Now, both of those tanks are being filled at the same rate. We want to know how much longer will it take to fill the larger tank compared to the smaller tank. So what I would do here, because our units are already the same, when I divide those numbers out, we can see that it's going to take 3.375 times as long to fill the larger one. Because that large tank is 3.375 times as big, that's our volume scale factor. We're also asked how many times greater the radius of the larger tank is compared to the smaller one. Radius is a linear measure. So if I know the volume scale factor is this value, what could we do with that to get the linear scale factor? I can cube root it and that indicates how many times greater our larger radius is. Again, because this is larger than one, we know it's going to be greater. Remember to watch your units. We typically think of scale factor as the linear scale factor, but if we're dealing with area, we have square units. We're gonna square the scale factor to get how many times larger or smaller that that new area is. If we're dealing with volume, we have cubic units. We're going to cube the linear scale factor to figure out how many times larger or smaller our new volume is.